Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some additional information to talk about as far as the Ethereum project goes. And first and only up, NFT marketplace OpenSea to add Ethereum layer two protocol for gas-free trading. And if you've been following the channel for a while, you know I've been pretty hard on Ethereum because of their issues with time constraints, with the issues of pushing back projects, with the issues of fees. And now it looks like uh, everything's starting to come out pretty well. So we'll take a look at that and uh, I may have to eat a little crow. On top of that, uh, we'll take a just a little follow up on a video that we did yesterday as far as investment properties and buying with cryptocurrencies. Just a quick update as to what exactly happened with that uh, Celsius loan that I got. Amazing. And then uh, we'll finish up. They're just talking about actually it was a great comment that I got yesterday. This was from uh, Crypto Cowboy about his genius plan, uh, which was actually a pretty good plan and what he plans to do as far as to pay back certain loans. So we'll go over all these things. But first, let's take a look at what is going on into the market. So right now it is uh, April 2nd, and I'm glad we're done with April 1st because I was so sick of seeing all those stupid April 1st videos and jokes and uh, things on Twitter because you didn't know what, what was real and what was not. Whatever. Some of them, I mean, some were funny, but some just did it so awful. I'm just like, this is just stupid. So I'm glad we're here on April 2nd. That's all I can say. Uh, also, what I'm also glad about is that we're almost at a $2 trillion market cap. Can you fathom that just, uh, you know, six months ago, a year ago? Just a year ago in March, when we had that huge black swan event, when everything just dived down, Bitcoin's around $3,000, $4,000. Ethereum was 100 bucks. Everybody was like, this is it. It's never going to come back. And now here we are, $2 trillion market cap. I mean, if you bought around then, which I did, I just didn't do enough of it, uh, then you do pretty well. But remember, you bought what you could when you could to just be happy with where you're at and uh, uh, good enough. So today, Bitcoin is almost at 60,000. We had actually touched over 61,000. So, hey, not too bad. Let's uh, see how that goes. Again, ebbs and flows, and there's always going to be a little bit of retracement. Uh, Ethereum, I think, yeah, Ethereum did touch 2000. Now it's back to 2077. So congratulations, Ethereum holders, all time high. Uh, that I am one of those. Binance Coin, again, is uh, up in that massive run, 348 and uh, up 6%. And the reason why Binance Coin is up so much is because of their chain where they're able to uh, do all these different uh, exchanges on, on their swap, their uh, smart chains. And they're able to do a bunch of different, uh, like I said, swaps for different cryptocurrencies, just like a DEX, just like a Uniswap, but you're using the, the Binance coin instead of Ethereum. That's why they're up so much. So we'll see how long that lasts with uh, Ethereum doing what they're doing. Uh, Tether's Tether, and they just got an audit uh, from, it's kind of weird, we covered this yesterday. They got an audit from a, an auditing firm in the Caymans Island, which said that yes, they are backed 100%, actually more so, uh, for every tether that they're actually printing. So uh, all those fears that people were saying that tether was just uh, overblown and, and not being backed by anything, well, auditing firm came in. It is a little bit weird that it's from the Cayman Islands, but uh, hey, Cayman Islands, I mean, let's be honest, uh, how many crooked places are out there in the world? Uh, it doesn't matter if you're in traditional finance or whatever else, there's crooked places everywhere. So if they're going to certify it, sure enough, let's do it. Uh, Cardano, let's just, everything's up. Everything's up except for Filecoin. And I will just say this, for everybody who held Filecoin, congratulations. I don't own any Filecoin, but that was a massive run up. I mean, it was just uh, huge and now it's down 20%. But to go from 30 to $40, now we're at 184, that's amazing. So again, uh, in the crypto markets, actually in any market, if it's gonna go up this high, this fast, you know there's gonna be a rebound. Nothing goes up forever, and this is a prime point. Never ever start to buy things as it's going parabolic hockey stick all the way up. The best time to buy is when things are boring, uh, which could be not today, I'll tell you that. All right, so that's what's going on. Also, let me blow this up so you can see what I'm talking about. Also for Trade the Chain, I'm going to uh, click on that little nice projected range and see what could potentially be great in the next hour or so. So if you're a big trader, look at Velas, 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 uh, Storm X, DigiNote, Green Power, Ethereum Classic, <laughs> Ion and Civic. And just so you know, these little numbers here, this one's in the middle. This is with 90% assurance. This is what it's going to be the next hour. So you're looking at 3% gains, two and a half, two, 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 pretty good. Storm X, I have to tell you this, what's going on with that? 
this is the one that Alex Masculi has been talking to me about forever. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll look into it. I actually bought some a, a while back and I'm pretty happy with the position that I got into. And I've been talking about this on my channel for a while, not as much as some other projects, but again, it's one of those tokens that actually does something. So, right. So StormX, you can go to stormx.io. And uh, what's great about it is that first of all, it's over 750 stores. So you can like, like Ryan over there at Trader Chain, he actually bought his Adidas about a month ago with it. And because he got crypto back and all his purchases, the, it paid for themselves. So that, that's what you're into. I don't buy a bunch of stuff, but I mean, this is one of those tokens that actually does things. And these are all the different partnerships that they have. So um, yeah, pretty good. On top of that, and we'll talk about this in a bit. If you, where's that button? Staking, yeah. If you stake right now, StormX, 15%, uh, you know, a APY, so not too bad. Anyhow, that's what's going on today's uh, market, market stuff. Let's take a look at what's going on as far as our top story. So this is what I want to talk about. You've been the channel for a while. You know, I haven't been very happy with Ethereum, and people have been like, why are you so negative on Ethereum? Why are you so negative on Ethereum? Because nobody gets a pass on this show. That's why. Like, there's a problem right now with Voyager. And there's a different things that are happening where like people can't, there's a problem with some people not being able to get uh, their crypto off of Voyager. So I called out Steve. This is like the third time I've done it. And of course, it's all about growing pains, but you know, you have to push the people. Remember, uh, they work for us. It's not the other way around. So Ethereum, I'm not a religious fanatic. Okay. So if Ethereum is having problems where they're like, hey, you know, sorry, it's uh, there's these huge fees and there's a huge wait times. I'm not going to stand for that. I'm a consumer. And if uh, it doesn't work out, I'll go someplace else. And I don't have to stay here. You don't have to stay here. And if you want to stay here, that's fine. Now, when things come around, I'll change my mind. And here we are today. So NFT marketplace, open seed at Ethereum layer two protocol for gas fee trading. All right. This is what I was talking about. Great. So I'm not going to sit around and trade $50 worth of, of uh, Ethereum so I can pay $55 in fees. That makes no sense. But if something like this comes along, I'm pretty happy. So here's what we got. The marketplace, this is OpenSea, says we'll be adding support for trading via decentralized protocol Immutable X. OpenSea said Wednesday that technology will provide instant trade confirmation, increased scalability, and zero gas fees. That's fantastic. Exactly what I was waiting for. Integrating Immutable X enables us to offer users a gas-free trading experience without sacrificing the security of the Ethereum network. This is from OpenSea header product, Nate Shastain. The protocol is capable of processing 9,000 transactions per second. That's pretty darn good, 9,000 TPS. We built Immutable as a ZK rollup. ZK rollups are a crypto method for verifying and settling transactions in mass. So instead of just doing, so really what it is is like this, rollups, Put it as simple as I possibly can. And I'm not a very technical person. Go watch Hashoshi. That guy's a genius. He, he knows a lot of things. He's in my description. So ZK roll up, instead of doing one transaction on the network, they're going to roll up a ton of transactions, whether it be 100, 1,000, 10,000, whatever else it is. On a layer two, send it over, and it's only one transaction instead of uh, of all the 10,000, instead of one, 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 all the 10,000, which will really free up the whole network. And that's what we're talking about. So I will take something like that. Now, I took a look at Immutable X as far as what it has. Nice website. A lot of people have great websites. And it seems pretty interesting. Zero gas fees, instant trains, and scalability for games, applications, marketplaces without compromise. You've got zero gas fees for peer to peer trading. Set your own trading fees. No custodial risk. Keep your private keys. 9,000 TB, just like I talked about, right? And then it goes on to all the different things that it has. I actually sent out an email to them because I could not find their like Twitter accounts or Instagram or any of that stuff. So uh, I'll just, I sent an email, hopefully they can come on the show and just talk to us about how this actually works. And then we talked about ZK rollups, but here's the thing. If they have something like this going that well on OpenSea, because right now you can go to OpenSea, I think it's OpenSea.io, I'm not for sure. Don't check me in the comments, but you can create an NFT. I've created a couple NFTs and I've sold them. One was me in that Shill King t-shirt. The other one was uh, the first thumbnail I used for my first video. And they sold on OpenSea. And there was no transaction fees to create them. Well, I was like, well, how does that work out? You know. So here's my question, everybody. So if we have something like this, and it works out pretty well for NFTs, 
Why can't we create a DEX out of this? Why can't we do other things that Ethereum should be able to do? Maybe this is the thing that Visa was talking about as far as partnering up and uh, putting USDC on their platform. USDC is a stable coin. It is an ERC-20 stable coin, which will run the Ethereum network. So maybe this will actually happen. And this is what I'll just tell you uh, for this. Yes, I'm hard on Ethereum, but I'm only hard on those that I love. <laughs> That's really what it comes down to. But honestly, if you're going to put your money into it, again, they work for us, not the other way around. If they fix those things, I'm happy. Everything is good and I'll change my mind. So if this can happen, I see big things. Now, as this all went about, at no point in time did I say, I'm going to sell all my Ethereum and put into something. I'm just not that way. I have an exit plan. And last time when I hit 2000, which was I think about a month or so ago, a month and a half ago, I sold a little bit of Ethereum as per my exit plan. But as things were, I was not being very happy with them. It wasn't like I was going to sell everything and put it into tomato coin or whatever else, right? I'm just not going to do that. I'm just going to wait and see what happens. Pretty smart people will see what it is. And I know some people had said, like, they give me a lot of slack for talking about Cardano. I don't understand. I think Cardano could be, still be a great thing. Again, I'm just an investor. It's not a religion. It's not that I'm putting uh, all my emotions into it. You need to take that out of the equation. And if it makes you money, then it makes sense. So that's really all I'll say. And uh, hopefully I wish the best because uh, right now Ethereum is my second biggest hold. Cardano is my third biggest hold and on down the line. So hope it all works out. Anyhow, let me know what you think of the comment section. Let's move on to our next piece, which was, I want to talk to you real quick about, so we're still in Puerto Rico. We're actually going to stay a couple more days because we need to close on this new property that we bought. And uh, the... The thing that happened is that I was caught a little bit short as far as the liquidity process, so I need a little bit more dollars. And I actually had, instead of selling my crypto, which I didn't really do right now, I actually went ahead and did a loan with Celsius. And I talked all about the process and, and how it's going to work. So you can check that video out, link at the very end. But there's one thing I want to make mention about this one, which was pretty amazing to me. Have you ever gone to get a loan at a bank or any place else? It sucks. And you have to go through the whole process. You have to give, you know, they have to do a background check. They have to take a look at your, uh, the three credit reports to make sure that your credit's okay. They have to look at your loan to value or uh, loan to debt ratio and all that stuff. Then they say, well, we'll give you a little bit of this and it's going to be whatever, 5%, 7%, 10% or whatever uh, the, the terms are at that point. Could be lower, could be higher. With Celsius, it was awesome. One of my phone. This is the second one I've done too. Clicked on the Celsius, clicked on borrow, said I want to borrow this much. It was 1% APR. It, that was at 10 p.m. two days ago. Uh, 9 a.m. No, it wasn't 9 a.m. By 9, 10, 30 or so. Afterwards, they send an email. They say, hey, Rob, you got to, just to verify this is you, send us one piece of information that has your address on it. I did that 30 minutes later. They approved it. One hour later, that money was in my bank account. That's amazing. So within a 24-hour time frame, I got a pretty sizable chunk of cash for putting up my collateral of my Bitcoin. Now, again, just to reiterate, when you do that, you do not lose your Bitcoin. It's just put there as collateral. You will not get interest on your Bitcoin because they are, they are putting it up and they're going to rehypothecate that. I've had Alex Mashinsky on the show. He told us exactly what they do. So it's very transparent. And then once, even if Bitcoin goes from 60000 whatever it is, all the way up to a million dollars, you still, whatever you owe, like let's say, for example, this one was $10,000. I'd have to pay $10,000 and to get my million dollar Bitcoin back. And that's it. So I can see how this will work out pretty well, which leads me into my next point, which was something that Crypto Cowboy talked about as far as the comment yesterday. He goes, hey. This is pretty good, actually. He goes, here's my genius plan. I'm going to borrow against my Bitcoin. I'm going to use cash to buy and stake Theta. I'm going to use the T-Fuel rewards to pay the interest in the loan and watch the crypto grow in value for free. And I thought, yeah, that's pretty good. So there is a website. Let me show you real quick. Nice. And I talked about this yesterday. It was called stakingrewards.com, I think it was. Let me pull it up. Yeah, stakingrewards.com. And you can take a look at the top projects that give you the most interest for staking. 
So even if we're in a bear market, and I don't know when that bear market's gonna come, I don't know if it's gonna be super prolonged or whatever else, but even then, you're still gonna make some interest uh, in, in the cryptocurrency. So Cardano, Polkadot, look at Polkadot, 13%, it's pretty good. Avalanche, 5%, Ethereum, 7%. But again, you gotta lock it up uh, for some of these and some you don't. Solana, 11%, 41% for Terra. Man, I gotta tell you, I have Terra, I bought Terra, pretty happy with, with what's going on so far. I need to stake that. On top of the fact we just talked about StormX at 15%. So if you can do all those things, then you can borrow, you know, borrow against it and stake something else, get those rewards and then pay off this. I mean, it only makes sense. And then, like I talked about with, with mine, make sure that when you're doing these things, that the loans that you take, you're making that money work for you. It's not just like you're going to take money, sit in the bank account, do nothing with it. That's not how it works. You need to take, and I shouldn't say it like that. This is not investment advice. This is the things that I am doing. I am taking that money that they give to me and I'm putting it into an asset that is going to be passive income essentially. So I'm gonna put that into an investment property. I'm going to rent out that investment property on Airbnb. And we all already see on the island in Puerto Rico, there is a ton of people coming in here year round and people are renting it out and it's in high demand. So I will take the money that I gain from that, pay off the loan and that'll be it get my Bitcoin back in so much time, however much time I need, and it'll be worth whatever. And then I can just keep doing that again and again and again. Over time, I'll probably do some more videos, but I thought that was a pretty good one. And that was what Crypto Cowboy said. And also, I want to talk about, where'd he go? Bobby Giggs. Bobby Giggs said this. He goes, he says, uh, trade five, call it ELOC, an equity line of credit. Depending on the uh, LTV, a Bitcoin loan would pay for itself over time. This is something that Michael Saylor talked about. So again, you know, you'll have uh, Bitcoin miners, they will take out a loan against the Bitcoin and then they will slowly pay it off from the revenue that they get <laughs> from making more Bitcoin flywheel and everything works out. I'll cover this more in detail later, but that's what we got. Anyhow, that's it for today. So thanks so much for sticking with me to the end. If you got some value out of it, give it a thumbs up. It helps the channel tremendously. Also, consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive. And that is all for today. I'm going to link up uh, two more videos that we talked about on the left and right. So you can watch those after this. And that is all. Thanks so much. See you.